Hi everyone, really excited to kick off uh, the last uh, segment of uh, today, which is all about uh, platform uh, engineering. So we'll start by uh, defining what is platform engineering. We want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Then we'll see how this role have evolved in the last uh, few decades, even before it was called platform engineering. We'll talk about some of the key responsibilities and the challenges that uh, this team have, and we'll try to predict uh, what the future hold for platform engineering. And then we're going to have some uh, really cool demos of uh, two products that we uh, announced earlier uh, today and we'll see how they work together to address uh, some platform engineering uh, use cases. So here is the definition, right? I really uh, liked how Gartner defined it. Platform engineering improves developer experience and productivity by providing self-service capabilities with automated infrastructure operations. Platform engineering is trending because of its promise to optimize the developer experience and accelerate product teams' delivery of customer value. So if I were to summarize this, the main objective that platform engineer have is really to provide the best developer experience to his application team. So they can focus on innovation and developing the applications and reduce the toil as much as possible. Now let's go back in time and see how this role have evolved in the last uh, 30, 40 years. Let's go back to the 80s and the 90s. That's easy because there wasn't really such a thing as platform engineers back then. Each team was working in a completely independent way, working in silo, and nobody really uh, had any focus on reusable infrastructure. However, if we move up to the you know, early 2000s, uh, late 90s with the rise of the internet, there was a lot of uh, emphasis uh, on web applications and the concept of uh, SaaS started to emerge. And that's where we saw a much stronger need for uh, designing very reliable cloud infrastructure. And this is where uh, platform engineers started to build the infrastructure for these types of uh, applications, for web applications that serve the backbone for, for the SaaS products. And this is also where we saw the trend of uh, DevOps start to emerge, developers and ops working uh, together um, in, in a collaborative way and share the same responsibility for their uh, applications. Then if we move up a little bit, like maybe 10 years ago, that's where we saw the concept of cloud computing, computing and digital transformation. Uh, this is where uh, platform engineers uh, started to design uh, what we call today ephemeral cloud infrastructure. So no more uh, patching and reconfiguring existing environment. You just uh, tear down the environment and set up a new one with the right uh, setup. Also, this is where uh, developers started to design applications that are not just uh, easy to maintain and can scale, they are also easy to deploy. And that's where they use a concept like uh, containers and API-driven uh, architecture. Also, this is where uh, the concept of um, infrastructure as code uh, started to emerge with tools like uh, Terraform. Um, a little bit later in that uh, decade, uh, that's where we saw the concept of uh, developer experience, and this is where the platform engineer became much more prominent. We saw much more demand for these type of roles in, in different uh, organizations, and self-service was, uh, was key objective. And that's where we saw additional focus on monitoring and making sure that the system is reliable and can be remediated in an automatic way from every failure that, that may exist. And in the last few years, it's all about AI, and we saw the adoption of uh, internal developer portal started to be very prominent. And you know, the AI definitely adds uh, more complexity to the responsibilities of platform engineers because they had to support machine learning uh, workflows and big data analytics. So this is where we are now, and let's see what are the key responsibilities that these guys have. The first one and the most important one is, of course, to uh, provide the best-in-class developer experience to their application teams. Gone are the day where developers open a ticket and wait uh, a few weeks or days and, and even hours until they get the service or the infrastructure that they need. It all has to be in a complete self-service approach and fully automated. And we're also empowering our developers to be completely responsible for their applications. They can deploy it in a completely independent way using practices such as continuous delivery. 
The second uh, objective is, of course, to design and maintain infrastructure as code and store the infrastructure configuration in Git and use Git as the single source of truth using solutions like Terraform, Pulumi, and others. And the, the third objective is, of course, to bake security and compliance practices into the services and the infrastructure that uh, the platform engineers provide to their application teams. So with all these uh, challenges, uh, sorry, with all these responsibilities, of course, there are several challenges that come with it. The first one is the classic um, conflict between innovation and stability. Developers always want to move fast and, and innovate and, and push things as much as they can. And you know, folks like SREs want to keep the production much more uh, stable and less uh, shaky. Platform engineers sometimes are being caught in the middle and they have to do the right balance. They want to give the best uh, experience to, to their developers, but make sure that they don't break anything in the production environment or any customer facing uh, system. The second uh, challenge that, that we keep uh, hearing about is how do you bake security and compliance in a way that is completely seamless for the developers? They can move fast, they can innovate, and everything needs to be completely abstracted from them so they don't, ha they don't have to worry about security and make sure that the services, the application that they deploy to do not expose the organization to any security threats. And uh, you know the, the technology stack is always going to evolve, and we're always uh, going to add a new cutting-edge technology into our application. Now, the platform engineers are on the hook to support these new technologies while still providing the same level of support to all the, I would say, legacy software and technology, because it usually serves as the backbone of, of the business. Now, let's try to predict while, uh, what the future holds for uh, platform uh, engineers. Uh, I think it's safe to assume that there's gonna be more pressure to be more efficient, more automation, and reduce toil from the developers to make sure that they don't have to worry about compliance, security, uh, and configuration. Everything needs to be provided in a completely seamless way and also a cost-effective way. Speaking about um, AI and big data, uh, it's pretty safe to assume as well that AI is going to take a bigger part in, in, in the tools that we are developing, which means that the, the platform engineers must provide services to do it using, again, machine learning workflows and big data analytics and data pipelines. Um, and I think if there is one thing we know for sure is that tomorrow there's going to be this new shiny thing that the developers are going to use in, in their uh, development process. And again, platform engineers are on the hook to actually support this in addition to all the other things that we have in a very heterogeneous environment. So definitely looks like um, you know, the future is not going to get any easier. But the good news is that Harness is here uh, to help. And as we uh, announced earlier, we have two new products, uh, Internal Developer Portal and Infrastructure as Code Management, that were designed especially for platform engineers and help them to master developer experience and provide the best-in-class uh, developer experience to their application teams so they can be more efficient in what they're doing and they can continue to innovate. Um, in order to uh, see those products, I want to invite my good friend, uh, Alex, our VP of uh, Sales Engineering, uh, to the stage. So Alex, Thanks, please Eric. take it away. So today for the platform engineering demo, I'm going to highlight developer self-service by doing some real requests of complex pipelines. We're going to start with a self-service infrastructure use case, and then we're going to do a full stack, uh, both with uh, feature flags, CI, and CD, all orchestrated via IDP in the infrastructure module. So I'm going to highlight a few things, and Eric did a great job this morning kind of going through some of the basics of IDP and infrastructure, but I'm actually going to go through and kind of run these requests live. And a lot of times when organizations are looking at IDP, they're thinking about it in terms of developer onboarding and the time it takes to have a new developer have their first meaningful pull request. And so a lot of times when you're in a new infrastructure and in a new environment, knowing all the details of where to get access to infrastructure, how the pipelines interact is very difficult. So having a catalog by which I can go and request things makes it a lot easier here. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and request a infrastructure 
see here. Give me one second. I'm going to reload this. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm going to choose this. And I'm going to go ahead and just pick an owner here. This is based, obviously, on the harness RBAC and pick field engineering. And then I'll have a repo associated with it, which is, uh, in this case, I'll just pick you know, a random repo, click Next. And then here I'm presented with a variety of customized options. So I can pick different cloud providers. I can pick different infrastructure types. For this particular sake, I'm just going to go ahead and select a classic sort of EC2 as a service, uh, T2 micro, and go ahead and click the next step. This gives me a summary of my request, and I'm going to go ahead and create this. So this is one example where we're doing self-service infrastructure. And if I click here, it's going to take me to the harness pipeline that's orchestrating this within the infrastructure module. While this is executing, I want to do one other request, which is a full stack request. So I'm going to go back to self-service here. And here we have a full Java application, both with feature flags, CI, and CD. So I'm going to click on this one and give a repo name here, project name. So this is going to actually create a harness project from scratch. This could also be configured to create organizations and have many projects underneath. Underneath this, this is actually use, utilizing the harness uh, Terraform provider, which uh, shout out to Micah, one of our solution architecture leaders. He built this actually as a side project, and now it's the number one way organizations scale and onboard harness. So I'm going to give this a name unscripted one, pick a repo name, and go ahead and click next here. And so I can also choose you know, different infrastructure if I want to. I'll go with the defaults for now and just go with Kubernetes and Mongo. And here I got to pick an owner. So this is a required field. And click the next step and go ahead and create. So this is executing a much more complex request that's going to use a Terraform provider to provision out a variety of harness components. If I go back actually to my first request, where I'm doing infrastructure as a service, we can see the infrastructure module in action. So we had a change request before, where we created a JIRA ticket, and then we have the infrastructure phase, where we have a variety of different steps, both to check for best practices and also security as part of the pipeline. And here we ran the plan before, and then we export the plan results, and then we have the approval, which can simplify approvals by showing everything I need to see and none of the things I really need to in order to assume that right here we're going ahead and provisioning an EC2 instance, and I can see anything that's changed as well. So I'm going to go ahead and approve this request, and then this will go on to the next stage, and it'll approve it, and then export out and then apply the Terraform configuration. And as we've showed before, all the details in terms of state and all the configuration and the audit trail is stored in the system, so I can go back and look at that. So this is executing the infrastructure for EC2. While that's going on, I do want to showcase the more complex kind of pipeline here, which is actually provisioning out and applying um, harness infrastructure configuration. And it already completed successfully very quickly. So if I go back to the projects here and go to all projects, and instead of default, I'm going to go over here to the onboarding org. And now we see unscripted one is a harness project. If I click on it, we can go ahead and look at the actual pipelines that were created. So we have two pipelines that were created automatically. One is to enable a bunch of feature flags. So as part of the feature management module in Harness, you have you know, feature pipelines, which allow you to roll things out with governance. So I'm going to go ahead and run this particular pipeline. And this is just going to turn all the feature flags associated with this application that I'm just about to go ahead and build and deploy. So this ran very quickly because it's just flipping some toggles. And then I can go back here, and we have a full stack sort of build and deploy Java application. So a lot of times when new developers want to work on, say, a particular project, having pre-baked pipelines based on templates with different technology stacks with already having best practices enforced is key. So here's one where I can just go ahead and run this right now. And literally, I just did one click before to request that service. 
and now I can run the pipeline, and this will build and deploy a pipeline automatically um, based on an IDP request. And we can actually see here, uh, OPA is telling me that uh, I have a forbidden uh, step in my pipeline. So we're just showing the OPA in action there. But now this will do a full circle, build and deploy. It's running the build now, and then it'll kick back into the deploy. Finally, one thing I do want to mention in terms of this demo, you know, we showcase kind of the self-service aspect. If I go back actually to IDP itself, there's a couple things I want to point out. Number one is this is built on Backstage, which is the most popular open source framework uh, for IDP. And we have a variety of plugins available that you can configure easily. And we're never going to have a bias towards any particular technology. So you can configure any CI tool. It could be Jenkins. It could be Harness Competitors. It's important that we maintain, maintain neutrality when it comes to IDP, because we can never assume that you're going to use Harness for every particular capability. So this is enabling you to configure and customize this as, as needed. And actually, this whole menu system here, when I go back, is actually 100% customizable. So this is really the only harness module where you can configure kind of where all the GUI layout is. And as Eric talked about before, once you do provision services, we have a full understanding of what's going on. So a developer can easily get quick access to documentation, to maturity scores, to governance scores, and then obviously full mapping of both downstream and upstream dependencies, which is really important in a microservice world because a lot of times when a developer is making a change to their service, they have no idea what the impact is downstream. So having this all in the IDP and having completely customizable tiles for things like CICD or you know, scorecard or whatever else you want to add could be 100% custom as well, um, allows for a lot of flexibility in terms of IDP customization. So that's just an example of kind of the catalog component. The last thing I'll do is just go back here, and we can see now that the build is complete, and we're actually running a harness CD deployment and doing a canary rollout as well. So this is... Awesome. So we're almost done there, but okay. actually I think um, you know, that's really what I wanted to showcase today. It was kind of the self-service nature and really IDP plus infrastructure in action, both to automate any particular service requests, but then also showcasing kind of full stack harness automation integrated in Backstage. Awesome, awesome. So we completely abstracted all the underlying technology and configuration from the developer, right? If I'm the developer, I want to spin off a new project in Harness, I just go to the portal, provide the configuration that developer, uh, sorry, that the platform engineer allow me to do, like the name of the project and everything you just showed us, and then it just happens, yes. right? I don't have to worry about it. In a few minutes, I have a project up and running in Harness. That's, that's amazing. That's incredible. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Um, as we said earlier, uh, both um, uh, IDP and Infrastructure as Code are now available as a beta, a public preview. We are very uh, excited. If you guys are interested in give, if, if, of giving them a spin, please reach out to any Harness uh, person that is here, and uh, we, can, uh, we can make this happen. Thank you so much.